Good morning, welcome to Luke Big Hair Studio. I'm just warming up and um, today I'm doing this. So it's just uh, my fingers are playing two, one, four, 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 go back up. Maybe start here. How about up here? And so, um, I got a new envelope filter. The one I usually use, uh, it it's broken twice now. I've got it in for repair, and I decided I kind of need a, a a backup or something. And so I got an envelope filter, and so I'm practicing with the envelope filter. So let me turn that on now and now listen. And you might say, oh, that's not real obvious. I'm, I'm not really hearing it. Okay, well, watch this. Let's try. Um... Or even here, I can almost disable it with how I'm picking. But now listen. Let's compare the tone what I just played, now let me shut it off. Uh, the volume is slightly, uh, just a little bit lower with it off, but I have it set where I like it. So we're not gonna worry about the volume, but listen how, I don't really hear it. But now when I, so I'm picking here, my right hand is picking over the high end of the fretboard. I can hear it a little bit. But now listen. So now my hand is over the bridge pickup. past the bridge pickup. Look if I go here. Now here. The other thing that I've noticed is check out the G string. Now let me play that exact same thing. There it's pretty similar, but here I get more resonance on the G string, which it maybe makes sense because the guitar is tuned to G. A G is the guitar chord or key. I had a guitar, uh, one of my guitars when I first, I changed the strings, but before I changed the strings, and it was earlier in, in the year, it's middle of winter now, the G, I think it was the G string would, would buzz in a way, almost like a sitar. So I could play a note, I could play something here and it wouldn't do it. It'd almost be like this. Uh, on that guitar, just changing the string uh, would create that effect. It was kind of cool. 
I change the strings, like just changing which string I play. I change the strings and now it's the middle of winter and I think that has changed, it, it hasn't been doing it. I kind of almost forgot about it. Um, the guitars, these guitars kind of talk to us and they, the more we explore different tonal options, especially with our picking hand, the more um, things change, the more you'll start hearing things. So if you're practicing something, let's say you're just practicing a lick, like that's the lick. You're just gonna practice that. We'll play it here with your right hand. Now play it here. Now play it here. Now play it here. Now change, maybe we'll add um, some distortion. Or let's change pickups. Big difference. Or let's turn down the volume, uh, turn down the, the tone. Let's turn off the um, envelope filter. You hear all the volume went down just a little bit, but we knew that. Let's turn the volume or the tone pot all the way down. Now let's turn it back up. Let's turn the volume down. Turn it back up. If you watch, um, if you watch, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, I was watching him the other night. He's, um, I see his hand move to his volume. Now he's playing a strat, and the thing I love about strats is that the volume, the volume is more like right here. It makes it a lot easier to do volume adjustments with a strat. That's, I think, probably the single biggest advantage to the Stratocaster, is my way of thinking. But if you watch Stevie Ray Vaughan, he'll be playing, like maybe he's playing some rhythm. I can't play Stevie Ray Vaughan. And then he goes to a lead. And then back. If I had a little more gain, he'd be able to hear that more. I see him, um, his hands going to the volume pot like constantly. Now, I don't think he's always changing the volume. I think sometimes he's, he's just developed the habit of controlling his volume because the volume will control his gain, it controls his sustain, it controls his tone, especially um, with uh, older strats and most guitars, when you turn the volume down, you also are turning down the tone a little bit. Just, uh, and even if he's not changing the volume, he's, he's listening to the amplifier and he's listening to the response. And so he's like, ooh, do I need a little more? Or maybe as his note decays, maybe he'll bring up the volume just a little bit. Watch him, he does it constantly. Um, and I think that's really indicative of someone who's listening um, to what they're playing and really uh, responding to what the amplifier and the guitar are doing. The guitar and amplifier are responding to what he's doing, and he's responding to them as well. It's a, it's a feedback loop. Um, now, what I love about the envelope filter, what the envelope filter does is it takes the note and as you play the note, it does a wow. 
And the harder you hit the note, the more wow you get. So if I play this note here, I don't get a lot of wow. But if I move to the bridge pickup and I move my pick back to the bridge, do you hear that wow? What's great about that is that let's say you're practicing and you find that you you tend your volume tends to kind of be all over the place. You tend to hit some notes harder than others and you're struggling to, to be consistent in your picking. Well I hit that note really hard. And that envelope filter isn't gonna let you forget it. It's gonna tell you right now that you hit it too, too loud. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you're playing. If you really want to sting a note. And now you want to hit softer. The envelope filter to me is the ultimate effect for expression, <clears throat> expressive playing. It does it, it responds to your playing. And so you can use it as a tool to help understand what you're doing and to help listen better uh, and hear what, how the different ways that you attack a note affects the note. It's, it's a, uh, so it's a it's like a, a learning tool. It's just another tool in your palette that can you use uh, to improve your playing, improve your touch, improve your listening skills, all that stuff. So, anyways, I uh, just wanted to share some thoughts about an envelope filter as a um, as uh, something that you can have on while you're practicing, uh, even something as Boring is sort of a finger warm up exercise. Okay, this is Matthew with Luke Big Hair Studio. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.